Okay, so we're going to set up OBS Studio on a Mac here to do recording of videos. We're not going to be setting it up specifically for streaming. That's an important note. This is for good quality video recording. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to obsproject.com and we're going to click on our appropriate platform, which in this case is going to be the Mac. You're going to choose whether you've got the Intel or Apple Silicon chip. I'm guessing probably at this point most people have the Mac. Apple Silicon, so I'm just going to click on that. It's going to download it. We'll give it a second here. So I'm just going to move the browser out the way here. Here we have our downloaded version of OBS. I'm just going to double click on this. It's going to open up the DMG file. I'm just going to drag it over to my applications folder. It'll take a second. And now we can right click and eject that. Okay, at this point, uh, we don't need this DMG file anymore, so you can delete it. Just going to go over to our applications and we're going to open up OBS for the first time here. When we do that, it's going to give us some warnings. We're just going to say open. It's going to need a bunch of permissions for things like cameras and microphone and accessibility. So just go through and perform all the operations it wants to do here. So, yep, that's fine. We do want to allow this to happen. I'm going to click later here. We've got a few more of these to get through. This one is now set up. We're going to request access and allow that request access, allow that and then open the accessibility settings. We do want to do that. So I'm going to say, there we go. All right. So that's that one taken care of. We'll just click that again to make sure. Yep. With all of those done now, we can click continue. When we do that again, it's going to ask about a camera extension, a few other things. We're just going to say, okay. And on this, screen here, the auto configuration wizard. You're going to want to say optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming. I will only be streaming, be using the virtual camera or optimize for streaming and recording is secondary. In this case, we're setting it up for recording. So we're not going to worry about streaming here for now. We're going to check a lot of these settings manually anyway, but we're just going to go ahead and let the auto wizard do its thing. We're going to set our base canvas resolution here. I'm going to go with 1920 1080 HD frames per second, either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 where possible is fine. I'm just going to click next. It's going to go through and say, Hey, you've got this hardware here for the Apple encoding, high quality, medium file size. And we're just going to say, yep, apply those settings. We are now done here. That is the setup for basic configuration. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make OBS fill the screen. There we go. So let's give a quick run through on what we've got here. This is our stage. This is what people are going to see up here, right? Down here on the left, we've got scenes. Uh, this is the default layout, by the way. We've got scenes. We will be taking advantage of those. I'll explain those in a moment. Along with sources, we've got the audio mixer here, and you can actually see that it's already detected my microphone. As I'm talking, you can see the audio level going up here. Scene transitions here. We don't need to worry about too much. And then we've got our controls to start and stop recording. And that's going to be a key one for us in the setup here. So let's talk about this scenes. What is this? Well, we can have multiple scenes, right? So for example, you may need, you know, full screen video with a camera, and then you want to switch to a whiteboard or switch to the desktop, or maybe a, a scene that has all of those in. And we're going to go ahead and configure and set those up here so that you can sort of switch between shots, as it were, different layouts. So I'm going to start by right clicking and renaming this one. We're just going to call this one our start screen, right? So on here, you can add all sorts of media, text, anything else, anything you want to have here, maybe a slide and put in there to sort of say, Hey, we're getting ready. We're getting started. So we're going to do that here. We're just going to do a, a, some basic setups here. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to choose this text and I'm just going to say, um, <clears throat> getting started, right? We've got to give it a name. So I'm just going to say, okay, it's going to say, um, we're going to, we're going to say, just getting started here. I'm not going to put any kind of, you know, fancy fonts or anything like that on the screen here. I'm just going to select it there. Go. Okay. We're going to right click this here. You'll notice as I move around, it gives me the numbers to position this, 
but we're just going to put this in the middle of the screen. And the easy way to do that is to go through and we're going to go transform center to screen. And now that's in the center of the screen, right? So that's our getting started scene. Nothing fancy here. Add whatever you need. Let's add another one. Let's add our live desktop screen, right? So I'm going to click plus here. I'm going to give this one a new name and we're just going to call this desktop. And now you can see that you can switch between those and we've got a nice little fade. Now on the desktop, what we're going to do is we're going to click on sources and depending on how many video cameras and displays and all of those kind of things you've got attached, you may see different options. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through and say Mac OS screen capture. I'm going to click on that and we're just going to call this one the Mac OS screen. Okay. Click OK. And you can see it's going to get a bit, bit weird here for a second. By default, it's going to pick a screen for me. And this red line here is the sizing handle. And, and when you see this hashing here, that means it's bigger than the screen area, right? So we're just going to click on this and just drag it down and make it smaller. I'm going to click allow here, make that go away. And I'm just going to drag it and it's going to just going to resize it to fit the window. So now my desktop is now fitting. I know this is really weird, right? Um, it's now fitting the entire display, but that is now capturing everything on my desktop. As you can see, let's do another one, but this time let's duplicate this one. So I'm going to say duplicate. I'm going to call this desktop plus camera, right? I'm going to add a camera here. So I'm just going to click. Okay. If this gets too little confusing here, or you've got these sources, this little eye drop, little eye symbol here, you can just click on that and it's, it's just going to hide it. We're going to do that. Otherwise this is going to get a bit bizarre here for a second. So now that I've got this set up here, I'm actually going to use my iPhone as my camera. Um, you can use obviously any of your cameras and multiple cameras for that matter, but I'm going to click plus and I'm going to add a video capture device. I'm just going to call this iPhone. Click OK. And then I'm going to find my device here, right? So I, as you can see, I've got, you know, a couple of cameras built in, uh, but we're going to go with iPhone camera here. Just going to click on that. It's going to try and connect to my camera. There we go. Preset, whatever you need it to be. It doesn't always have to be super high because you're not going to necessarily use this full screen. So, I'm going to go with something like 965.40 here and I'm just going to click OK. So now this is another window source that I can now click and drag around. So and position, if I turn my screen back on, you can now see, right, we've got, I can sort of dock this down in the corner here. We're just going to shrink that down. So now I've got my camera and my desktop on here and I can just independently turn them on and off at any time the source is right there. Okay. So that's how that works. And if you, once you've got a position you're happy with, you can just lock them in position and now you cannot accidentally click on them and move them around. Let's add one more source here. Now again, you know, so I can switch between just the test desktop view here. Let's lock that one, right? Let's go right back here and lock this one. So I'm getting started. Uh, I've got my desktop because I want to focus on my desktop and then I'm going to click on desktop and camera because I want to see it this way. Okay. But I'm actually going to duplicate this one more time and we're going to have desktop plus camera plus, and I'm going to say whiteboard and I'm going to use a whiteboarding application here. So what I'm going to do is let's just make that confusion go away there for a second. I'm going to open up Freeform, right? Drag it across here. There we go. Now this, I would actually probably have this set up on a different display because obviously I'm capturing this desktop. As you can see here, if I turn this on, right, um, and turn that on, we're, we're gonna go crazy here and turn them all on. And then now I'm gonna bring Freeform in here, right? You can see wonderful effects, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this off to my other display, but then I'm gonna capture this application here. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say, Click on there and I am going to go in and I'm going to say, I'm going to say Mac OS screen capture. I'm going to click on that. We're going to call this whiteboard. 
go OK. Now, this time, instead of a display capture, I actually can capture a window or an application. I'm going to go with an application here. And it's on my Thunderbolt display. And the application I want to capture, you can see I've got a list of running applications, is Freeform. Once I do that and go OK, now my application on my other screen here is being captured, right? And it's going to look like it's sort of moving around here because of the desktop. But if I interact with the application, if I if I do something on here, you can see that's going to work for us. If I draw like a shape or you know things like that, right? I'm now capturing the application. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to rescale uh, this this here because I don't want it to be anywhere near this big. But now if I wanted to, I can have, I know this looks really confusing on the capture here, sorry. Um, on the whiteboard here, right, I've got this whiteboard that I can turn on and off as well. Um, if I wanted to, you know, again, I could make this a separate scene, but I can switch this on at any time to show folks, hey, here's the whiteboard, right? If I, if I want to just toggle that on and off, I can do it that way, or I can switch between these scenes. So this is how you set up some basic scenes here to use. Obviously, you're going to lay them out and make it look a lot more fancy than this. I just wanted to show you how to get the sources in. Anything that has an audio source will also be added to the audio mixer here. So for example, if my Mac was creating audio, I can adjust the level independently here to do the mixing, plus the microphone, and if the whiteboard application had audio as well. If at any time you want to mute those, you can just click this here. And if I do this, you can see that I'm muting the microphone, right? So that's how we do all of these. Now that we've got all of this set up, how do we do the actual recording? Very straightforward. You're just going to hit start recording. It's now recording it to the hard drive. Simple as that, right? So I can do all the things, whatever I want to do here. I'm going to hit stop recording. And now it's finished recording. This will record it to the videos folder on your Mac, where you can now take that source uh, video and use it for whatever you want to do. But this is how you set up a basic recording for your Mac here with multiple sources, however you want them to be, whatever kind of sources. And so that's it, folks. We are ready to go here. And I hope that you create some fantastic content with it.